Hello everyone, this is part 2 on how to make a tower defense game in Scratch. In this tutorial, I will be setting up the enemy lists, which will be used for tower aiming and shooting, and I will also begin making our first tower that we will be able to place on the map. If you haven't seen part 1, check it out, link is in the description below. And before we start, we will be doing some code which involves lists, but I won't be going into too much detail about them right now, because they will be used in the next video. Anyways, let's get started. So first off, before we start creating the turrets, we have to first add some lists to the enemies. So let's go to variables, and then I'm going to make a list. And I'll call the first one um, enemy x, alright? And then keep it for all sprites. And I'll create another list, and then I will call this enemy y, okay? And then I'll create another list, and call it enemy progress. And I'll create one more, and call this enemy IDs. Okay, so the reason I'm creating these lists is because I need a way to track all of the enemies on the screen. And this is so that the towers that I will create will know which enemy to target. So of course, the enemy X and enemy Y lists will track the enemy X and Y positions, and then the enemy progress list will track the distance each clone has traveled on the track, and the enemy ID list will just have all of the clone numbers. So I'm going to hide all of these lists. Okay. And then under the win flag clicked, I am going to drag a delete all and change this to delete all of enemy X. And then also delete all of enemy Y. Delete all of enemy progress. And delete all of enemy IDs. And then I'm going to put this right after the hide. Okay, so this just makes sure that all of the lists are empty when the game starts. So now let's create a new variable, and then I will call this um, something like clone number. Okay, and then for this one, make sure to select for this sprite only. And this is because each clone will have a separate value for this clone number. So select for this sprite only, and then click OK. Alright, and this clone number variable will track which clone is which inside of all of these lists. So when the flag is clicked, let's set clone number to 0. And then inside of this repeat loop, let's change clone number by 1. And then I'm going to put this right before the create clone of myself. And now each clone that is created should have a different value for this clone number variable from 1 to 10. So now when a clone is created, I'm going to add a item to the four lists that we created. So inside of the lists, let's drag a add and then I'm going to change this to add um, nothing to enemy x, and this just adds an empty new item into the enemy x list, and then I'm going to duplicate this, and then also add an empty item to the enemy y list, and then for the enemy progress, I am going to add 0 for that, and lastly for the enemy ids, I am going to add the clone number. Alright, so each enemy that is created will have their own enemy X, enemy Y, and enemy progress, which they will change, as well as their own enemy ID. Alright, so I'm going to drag this under the when is a clone. And now each enemy will update these three lists. And by the way, this might seem a bit confusing, but it'll make more sense once I create the turrets, which will use these lists. So inside of the enemy movement block, I'm going to grab a replace item 1 of block, okay? And then I'm going to drag this under the enemy movement custom block. And then for this, I'm going to replace the clone number, so replace item clone number of enemy x with, go to motion, the enemy x position, okay? So and then I'm going to right click duplicate this block, and instead of enemy x, I'm going to change this to enemy Y, and of course, I am going to replace that with the Y position. And then lastly, for the enemy progress, I am going to duplicate this again, and change this to enemy progress. And then for this, since this is going to show how far the enemy has moved, I am going to actually go to variables, and then go to the lists, and then I am going to grab a item one of enemy IDs block, and then I'm going to change this to enemy progress, 
And inside of this right here, I am going to drag a clone number variable. And then I am going to go to operators, drag a plus operator, all right, and then drag this on the left side. And then I'm going to add the move speed on the right side. All right, so pretty much what this does is that when the enemy moves five steps, then the enemy progress will increase by five. Okay, so now I'm going to put this inside of here. And then I'm going to drag this back. All right, so lastly, we have to add a few more things for when the enemy leaves the screen. So inside of the if touching edge, I am going to go to the lists again, and then drag a replace item of block, and then in here, drag a clone number variable, and change this to enemy x. And then inside of the value, I think I am going to do a blank, okay? And then I am going to duplicate this, change this to enemy y, and also leave it blank. And then lastly, I am going to go to the lists again, and this time, actually um, grab a delete one of block. And then I am going to grab a item number of block. And then put the clone number variable in here. And then this is going to be for the enemy IDs list, so we can leave it like that. And I will drag this back inside of the value. All right, so I know I'm sort of speeding along with this, but pretty much now we know all of the clones X and Y positions, as well as their progress and their clone numbers. So I'm going to put this inside of the if touching edge. And then instead of hiding, I'm going to actually delete the clone. All right. And now I believe that should be fine for the enemies. So if I just show all of these lists for now, then when the enemies appear, then they should add their values to these four lists, as you can see. And then once they disappear, then this enemy IDs list should decrease in size, like this. And then the values should turn blank. All right, cool. So of course, there are no changes to the game other than these four lists. But now we can start creating the towers. So I'm going to hide these. And then I'm going to create a new sprite. And for now, I will make a simple tower. So I will make this a gray color. OK. And I think a black outline should be fine. Maybe a dark gray. All right. And then for the tower, I think I'll make a simple square. Maybe a lighter gray with a larger outline. All right. Might make it a bit smaller. OK. And I'll make the outline a bit smaller as well. OK. And then I am going to create one more rectangle. This is going to be how the turret shoots. All right. And I think this should be fine. OK, so this is my simple turret. And make sure that this square right here is centered in the middle, and not this entire thing, because otherwise the turret won't rotate correctly. So only center this square in the middle. OK, so now let's go inside of the code. And I'm going to drag a wind flag clicked. And then I'm going to go into looks, drag a set size to 100%, drag a switch costume to costume 1. And oh yeah, actually, I'm going to create a really simple shop where you can buy and place turrets. So actually, I am going to set the size to something like 25%. Okay, that's a bit too small. So maybe 50%, uh, 60, 65. Okay, so 65%. And then I'm going to put this turret right over here somewhere. So on the top right corner. All right, and then I'm going to drag this go to XY block. And pretty much what I'm planning to do is that I'm going to make it so if I click this image right here, then it will create a clone of the turret for me to place on the map. So to do that, I'm going to go to variables and then create two new variables. 
The first one is going to be called, um, let's call it mouse action. All right, and then click OK. And then for the second one, I'm going to create, let's call this can show radius circle. And then click OK. All right, so I want to make it so that if I click this right here, then it will create a clone of a turret, which will follow my mouse pointer until I click again, and then the turret stays in place. So to do that, we are going to use the mouse action variable. So I'm going to first set mouse action to none when the flag is clicked. And then I'm going to go to control, drag a forever loop. And then forever, I'm going to check if go to sensing, if the turret is touching the mouse pointer and the mouse is down, so sensing again, mouse down, then I'm going to go to variables and then set mouse action to something like, let's say, selected. Okay, so this is going to be the first click, which means that this sprite right here creates a clone of a new turret and then the turret clone should follow our mouse pointer. So let's go to control, and then let's drag a when it starts a clone, and then inside of it, I'm going to drag a forever loop, and I'm going to drag an if else statement, and check if, go to variables, if the mouse action is equal to selected, which means that the clone should follow the mouse pointer. Then, of course, we are going to go to motion and drag a go to and change it to mouse pointer. All right, and also make sure to create a clone of myself once the original sprite is clicked. And I'm also going to add a wait until block. So wait until, and then I'm going to right click duplicate this and put it in here. And I'm going to say, wait until touching mouse pointer and not mouse down. So I'm going to go to operators, drag a not, and put the mouse down in there, and put it back. All right, cool. And now I'm going to put this right uh, before the create clone of myself. All right, so now if we try it, then we should have a clone which appears under it once we click the sprite right here. All right, cool. So now, of course, we want to place the turret once we click again. So I'm going to go to control and then drag another when I start as a clone. And in this one, I'm going to check forever if mouse down, so sensing, if mouse down, then I'm going to wait until not mouse down. So this ensures that the player does one full click. So wait until not mouse down. Then I'm going to go to variables and set the mouse action to none. Okay, and for the clone, I am also going to set the size to its normal size, which was 100%. Okay, so now if we try it, then if I click, then we have a clone. And then once I click again, then it stays on the track. All right, cool. So of course, we all know that towers in tower defense games have ranges. So now I'm going to create a new sprite, and this is going to be the range for this tower. And for the range, I'm going to create a simple circle. So I will press shift and then hold for a perfect circle. All right. And I will make the fill a white color. And I think the outline for this is fine, maybe a bit smaller. Um, okay, I think an outline of four is okay. And now inside of the code, I'm going to drag a when flag clicked. And then I'm going to first hide the range sprite. So drag a hide. And I think I'm also going to make it sort of transparent or sort of see-through. So I'm going to change this to set ghost effect to 50. So let's try it out. Um, oops, okay, it's hidden. So show. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to create one more variable. 
So let's call this um, something like view radius. So this is going to determine how large this circle will be. And now we should be good. So let's go back to our turrets, right? And by the way, I'm going to name this uh, turret. Okay. And also, I'm going to name this uh, radius circle, I guess. Or um, turret range circle. All right. And inside of the turret sprite, I'm going to first set the can show radius circle variable to no. All right. And this means that the range circle will be hidden. However, once we are actually dragging the turret, we want to show the range circle. So inside of the if mouse action is equal to selected, I am going to set the can show radius circle to yes. And then up over here, once we actually place the tower, then I'm going to hide it again. So I'm going to drag the can show radius circle to no. All right, cool. So now inside of the turret range sprite, we want to check forever, and then I'm going to drag in if else. So we want to check if the can show radius circle variable is equal to yes. Then of course, we want to show the radius circle. So drag a show. And we also want to make it go to the mouse pointer. So let's drag a go to and change this to mouse pointer. All right, cool. And then inside of the else, we want to hide. And now if we try it out, then if we click on the image, then as you can see, we have the turret along with the radius circle. And if I place it down, then the circle disappears. All right, cool. And I think I'm going to make the turret a bit smaller. So maybe set size to something like 75%. Let's try it out. And OK, I think that's fine. And now we have our radius. All right, cool. All right, so let's try it out again. And let's see if we can place multiple turrets. Um, OK, so let's see. Um, oh yeah, one thing to change is that the mouse action variable should actually be for the sprite only. So, um, sorry about that. So let's create a new mouse action variable, and then I'll actually add a space in between it. So mouse action, and then select for the sprite only. All right, and then click OK. And now I'm going to replace all of the previous mouse action variables with the new one. So the one with the space. Okay, change this to the one with the space, and this one. All right, and then I will delete my old mouse action variable. All right, and now it should work with multiple turrets. So if I try it out, then, all right, cool. So now I can place multiple turrets, and the range always follows the one that is following my mouse. And now I'm going to hide all of these variables. And by the way, the view radius variable will be used in the next video, so I will just have it created for now, but I won't touch it. And let's go inside of the enemy as well and hide the variables. All right, so now we have our four enemy lists that will be used for the turret, as well as a simple turret shop where we can place these down on the map. All right, cool. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe too, if you haven't already. Again, in this video, we mostly just completed the setup for the turret aiming and shooting, which we will do in the next video. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. See ya!